Well, we're going to do our review over Chapter 6, Systems of Equations. Um, now that we've been graphing linear relationships, we can now graph two of them and watch, uh, see where they meet, where possibly they intersect, or um, possibly be their parallel, or possibly they're collinear, um, laying on top of each other. Let's take a look at this first one. So number one, I've got a linear relationship. I need to turn this into slope-intercept form, so I'm going to subtract three from both sides of here, so I end up with negative 3y equals x plus 3. I'm going to divide everything by negative 3 so I can get this in slope-intercept form. And there's my first one. I can plot it. It's at negative 1. And then it's a negative slope. It rises 1, runs 3. So it rises 1, runs 3, 1, 2, 3. Rises 1, runs 3, 1, 2, 3. There is my line. Well, if you guys could do that on your paper, <laughs> maybe someday. Let me look at the next one. So this equation, I'm going to do it right here, and I'm going to also put this in slope-intercept form. So I have 3y equals negative x minus 6. Divide everything by 3. So I have negative 1 third x minus 2. So I'm going to plot my point at 2. And interesting. Um, before I even get to more plotting, I'm noticing something here and something here, that these two have the same slope, which tells me that they're going to be parallel, and they do have um, a different y-intercept, so they're not collinear. So they're not on top of each other, but they are um, parallel to each other. So let me continue, continue to plot this out. This looks like it's, it is. It is going to be parallel. La la la. La 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 la. So I better make sure my line is, huh? Nice. Oh, oh hello. And parallel it is. Excellent. Let's take a look at the next one. Now for number two, why don't you go ahead and press pause. You do it. Um, I'm going to turn them into slope-intercept form um, over here on the right side. And we'll go from there. So let's both press pause. Right, this is what I found, putting them both into slope-intercept form. I'm able to plot the y-intercept and then run the slope out. I can see that my solution right here is indeed an intersection. And my solution to this system would be 4, 0. And my solution to the number 1, we didn't say that. Um, there's no intersecting points. These are parallel, so that we would say that there is no solution for these. I'm going to use the substitution method on these guys. So I'm going to um, take a look at solving for y. So I know what y is here, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in this first one here. So 3x equally. So 2x plus 7, I'm substituting in for y, equals 4x plus 4. I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I'm also at the same time going to subtract 4 from both sides. And I end up with um, no x's over here, 4 over here, and I'm ending up with 3 equals 2x divided by 2, x equals 3 over 2. Well, being that being said, I can use just any one of these equations, and I have solved for x, so I'm going to solve for y, knowing that x is 3 halves. y equals, um, that's, um, this is 6 over 2, which simplifies down to 3 plus 7, so y equals 10. So my solution is 3 halves, 10. All right, why don't you go ahead and try substitution for number four. So let's press pause, and I will work it out as well. And what I'm going to do is, in order to um, in order to do this, I'm probably going to isolate y on this equation and substitute it in here. Now let's take a look at um, what I did here. Okay, I took my first equation, isolated y down here. I substituted, actually I took 
this equation right here, and I isolated y, and then I substituted the y in here. Uh, I distributed, keeping track of my negatives. I ended up finding out that x equals 0. I went up and picked one of my equations. Um, I looked at um, when I took this equation and put it in this form. Um, that was a nice easy one to use. So I indeed did use that one. And I found out my solution is y um, is the intersection of 0, negative 1. So both of these two have um, one solution. There's an intersecting point. I'm going to solve these ones using the elimination method, one of my faves. Okay, so let's take a look. So um, it looks like I'm going to take away the 3x. Um, you can, a couple different ways to do this one is you can just subtract. Um, some people will subtract um, everything out. So um, I've seen some people do it this way. They, if they look at a subtraction, it's subtraction, subtraction, subtraction. You can totally do that, which is 9 minus 7, negative 3 minus negative 3. 24 minus 20. Totally do that way. That's a great way to do that. And that is another option. Um, I like to go ahead and multiply by negative switching all of these to the opposite of what it is. Um, helps me keep track of the negatives, but you can do either way. Um, it'll be just fine. So that being said, um, my first equation if I multiply everything by negative 1, it becomes negative 9x plus 3y equals negative 24. And I go ahead and add these. And I end up with negative 2x. Those are gone. Negative 4 divided by negative 2. x equals 2. And I'll use maybe this equation. Now that I know what x is, I can substitute it in. Minus 3y equals 20. 14 minus 3y equals 20. Subtract 14 from both sides. You end up with 34. Divide by 3. y equals negative 11 and 1 third. And I have my solution. This does have an intersection. Um, I knew it had an intersection early. As soon as I saw that, I have a solution for x. Since I have one of those, I know that this does indeed have an intersecting point. And I just needed to find my y. Let's go ahead and solve 6. I want you to press pause, work it out, and see how you do. All right, when I work this one out, again, in the elimination method, you can change anything you want. You can take your x's and make them both into 6. Multiplying my top equation by 2, multiplying my bottom equation by 3. Um, I chose just to switch my second equation. I'm multiplying it by negative 2, making this um, term into negative um, 6y. So I was able to cancel that out. But you have lots of options. Just be smart about it. All right, we're going to continue using the elimination method on number 7. Um, we've got a couple options here. Looks like we're going to have to change both of them to do some elimination on this one. So be smart about which one you're going to do. If you're going to do the x or do the y, it uh, doesn't matter. It's your choice. Just make sure you um, use accurate math and keep an eye on those negatives. We have to press pause, work it out, and let's see how we do. All right, I chose to multiply my first equation by negative 5 and my bottom equation by 3, I'm trying to get my x's to um, be eliminated. Um, that's one method I did. You could also do the y's um, on this one. doesn't matter as long as you're being consistent and following your algebraic rules. Um, let's go ahead and try that on number 8. Uh, some of you might be tempted to do some um, substitution on this one, but I need you to not because we're checking on elimination. So for this one, I'm going to subtract x from both sides so I can look at the right equation here. So I have... Uh, if I'm going to match my top equation, then it's negative x plus y equals 8. That's my bottom equation. Shift it around. I'm going to bring my top equation down. Oops, so y equals 48. And now we are set to solve. All right, those look good. 7y equals 56. Divide by 7, y equals 8. Now let's find a spot to put it in. I'm going to use, um, let's see, y equals 8. I'm going to use this guy right here. So if negative x plus 8 equals 8. 
multiply both sides by negative 8. I end up with negative x equals 0, x equals 0. My solution should be at 0, 8. Fun! Let's keep going. Ooh, we're going to solve by graphing. We're starting to do now systems of inequalities. Let's go ahead and I'll do the first one with you here. Um, you can press pause, work it out, and see how you did. Speed my video up a little bit. Um, however you want to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this first one. Um, I need, I'm going to make the line, okay, the line of the equation here. So I'm going to, I'm going to look at this as y equals 4. So that's going to put my line at y equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to put my line right here. I need to look and see, okay, so it is going to be a dashed line for this one, okay, and now I'm going to consider my shading. It says that y is um, less than 4, y is less than 4, so when I consider my y-axis and my line, where is y going to be less than 4? It is going to be below, so I will be shading below on this one. Shading below. Okay, let's take a look at my next line. I'm going to go ahead and shift this over. I'm going to add x to both sides so I have y. I'm keeping track of my symbol. Remember, anytime I multiply or divide by a negative, my symbol flips to keep up with that. Um, this did not have that situation, so my symbol stays the same. Let's go ahead and graph that. It's going to be also at 3, 1, 2, 3, and then it looks like it rises 1 to 1. And I see that it is going to be another dashed line here. Hold on, picked green. I can almost see that over my green. Yeah, not, my, not my best choice. Now, when I look at this as y is greater than, so when I look at my y-axis here, um, where is y greater in accordance to my line? It is this direction. And I can see that my shading happens, my uh, overlapping region happens right there. So my solution to this system is right tucked in here. All right, let's go ahead and try number 10. Um, why don't you press pause, give it a try, and let's see how we Okay, I took my first equation, turned into slope-intercept form, so I could plot it. I took my second equation, my second inequality was already in slope-intercept form. I noticed a couple things. This first equation here, my symbol had to flip because I divided um, both sides by uh, negative 2, so my symbol flipped to keep up with that. Um, I noticed that it's equal to, so I used a solid line in my first um, representation of my um, inequality. My second one is less than, so it is going to be a dashed line because my solution is not included on the line. A um, couple things. Let's go ahead and do a look at my first one. So this is my solid line. Y is less than. So when I look at my Y, where is Y less than? It is below, down here. Now let's look at my first equation here. Um, y is also less than. So I'm going to look at my data line, and where is Y less than? It's going to be less down here, so it's down in this area. So my overlap is right here. There's my solution to this system. Or right, a system of inequalities for the following graphs. Okay, let's take a look at each one of these. So the green one, let's look at this. So. I can see that this is going to be x, and it looks like it's at 1, 2, 3. It looks like it's at negative 3. Now, because um, the shading is happening this way, I know that um, I'm working where x is going to be less than negative 3. It is a dashed line, so it's not going to be equal to. So that line right there, the equation to it is x is less than negative 3. Let's look at this equation right here. Um, let's just go with the y-intercept. So my intercept is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so I know it's at negative 7. Um, my slope, when I consider the slope that's happening here, it rises 2 and it rises 2 and runs 1, 2, 3. So 2 thirds x I know is my slope. I notice that the shading is going this direction on this, so it's going to be where y is greater 
on the x, I notice it, it is a dashed line, so I'm going to leave it like that. So there's my equation for that line. I'm looking for the y-intercept, looking for the slope, looking which way the shading is happening. All right, for number 12, why don't you press pause and you give it a try. All right, for this one, I am going to talk us through this one, though, because the, I think this can be a little bit of a tricky point. So why? Uh, I'm going to look a couple things here. I've, I've got to check the interval, too, because sometimes the interval changes. One, two, three. So it looks like this interval is still going by ones. So three. Uh, if I look at my how it's sloping, it uh, looks like it rises to runs three, so two-thirds x. And the shading, it looks like this guy, it looks like right over here is where it's doubly shaded and a little hard to see. So that tells me that the shading for this must go this way, where y is down. So y is less than. Um, it is a solid line, so it's going to be y is less than or equal to. All right. Let's take a look at the second line, the dash line. That's why its intercept is at negative one. It's sloping. Let's see how it slopes. So it's going to be, it looks like it's a negative slope. And we'll go down to maybe, looks like there's an intersection right there. So one, two, three. So it's rising three, running one, two, three, four. So negative 3 force x. Looks like the shading is going this direction, which is on the y greater than, greater than. And it's a dashed line, so I'm going to leave it there. So that would be the equation of that inequality. And we can see the systems. On these ones, you just got to pay attention, again, to those details. The little details will get you on this one. Write a system of equations and solve. Let's look through some of these things. Let's take it into its pieces. Um, the length of a rectangle is, so the length is, I'm going to use a capital L, just so I can see it. That doesn't look like a 1. Okay, capital L is 5 less than 3 times the width. So it's 3 times the width and 5 less than that. Okay, so the length is... 5 times less than 3 times the width. All right, so there we go. Let's look at this next piece. The perimeter is 70. Okay, the, the perimeter is made up of two lengths and two widths, and that will give me 70. You gotta remember the doubles here, these twos right here. That's one thing that uh, students forget because when they're moving too fast. Well, I'm going to do some substitution because I know what L is, so I can take this and then substitute it in. So 2 plus 3w minus 5 plus 2w equals 70. And end up with 6w minus 10 plus 2w equals 70. Give myself some room. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And I end up with 8w. 80. Oh, that's nice when that happens. It doesn't always have to be a nice clean number, but a lot of times we end up creating it that way. I'm going to substitute it in, so if I know what W is, I'm going to use this guy, and I'm going to use green. So my length is going to be 3 times the width, which we discovered is 10. I didn't discover, we calculated it. Length is... 25. So my length is 25. My width is 10. And we can check it. Is 25 equal to 3? Is the width doubled minus 5? And it works. Fiery check mark. Why don't you try it in this one? Um, go real slow, build your equations. Let's do that first. Press pause, build your equations and then come back, and then we'll go from there. So pause, build equations, press play, let's see if we built the same equation. All right, did we build the same equation? 
I'm seeing the three seniors and the nine child should give me 75. I'm using S and C. You can use X, Y, you can use any variable you want. Just use what makes sense to keep track of it. Um, second day was eight senior, five children, a total of 67. So I have a system here now. I'm going to use um, elimination on this one, but in order to do that, I either have to change both my C's or both my S's. I I'm going to go for it. I'm going to commit and adjust both of these and multiply both of them. Um, I think I'm going to change the S's. And I got to switch one of them to negative just so I can get some good elimination. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press pause, work this out, distribute that out, and rewrite my equations over here. Again, you can work with the C's. You can use substitution on this one. You've got some options. This is the one I'm doing. I'm going to press pause. Pause. All right, let's take a look. So I um, changed both my equation to cancel out the S's. And I ended up with some big numbers, but that's OK. Um, and when I got to, um, oh, here's an error I made before. Um, I lost track of this guy right here, that negative. So I ended up with some really funky numbers, which made me go back and look at my work. And when I found that was negative, I ended up with negative 399. Um, and that ended up being the cost of the child's ticket being $7. And that means a senior citizen is $4 for that one. Let's try this one out. Why don't you go ahead and press pause, build your equation, and come on back. And let's see if we built the same equation. And then we'll solve. Then we'll go ahead and solve that. So pause, 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 pause. All right, here's our equations. We've got the small boxes, large boxes, the total of the prices. We're trying to find the prices. It looks like um, I'm going to want to use elimination on this one, so I can already see that I'm going to have to change them both. Either I have to change both the large boxes or change the small boxes. I'm probably going to go with the, the small boxes, even though I'm going to end up with really large numbers. That will be okay. Um, I'm going to go by negative 3 just so that I can do some canceling at the end when I do add them. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust these. Um, so they fit it, and again, I'm going to end up with really big numbers, like in the 2000s and stuff, um, which is okay. Um, I'm going to press pause and work this out. Why don't you also work it out, and let's see if we match. Let's take a look here. Um, when I multiply both sides, I ended up with, um, yeah, some really big numbers. That's okay. Um, Cancel out my S's. I simplified over here, ended up with a large box is equal 13. I substitute the 13 in either one of my equations, and I ended up being the small boxes being 7. And this works out. So, small 7, large being 13. All right, that is our systems. I'm going to go and soak my feet in a bowl of lime jello.